Hi guys, it's Mary McIntyre. So a few videos back, you may remember that I made these. Actually, my last video was me making this better from the original cast because the mold is not very good. One thing that I think would make these brilliant is a holographic insert. I am really loving my holographic butterfly molds that I got from Timu. Um, I've been making loads of these to make sun catchers and I think they're beautiful. I'm trying to find like a, an affordable silicone inlay that has like a holographic texture in it is something that I'm really struggling with right now. But I did see on Naptime Creations and also Pouring Your Heart Out that you can make your own. And um, the diffraction grating paper to make the really good ones is hella expensive here in the UK. And even then the delivery time was ages away and I'm too impatient for that. So I did see that Naptime Creation said that you can do it using this inexpensive window stuff. So it doesn't have as much holographic property as my butterfly molds do, but in the right angle and the right light, it does have a holographic texture. So what I'm going to do is cut some of this out. In fact, I've already done that. Tape it to my board and then I'm going to, I've made it big enough so that I can make inserts for both of these and also have a little bit left over for other projects, maybe some snowflakes or something. So the idea is that you put a silicone wall around the area that you're going to pour onto. You then need to put some epoxy resin onto there. Then that resin will be kind of like a diffraction sort of template. It'll pick up any of the diffraction pattern that is in this window film. Then you pour the silicone on top of it and make a silicone, really thin silicone inlay. So once I have that, I can then put the silicone inlay over the top of the base of my cl crystal clusters. Crystal clusters, hard to say. <laughs> so, by the way, I'm not crying with joy. Um, I'm excited about this project, but hay fever is horrific. The pollen count's terrible in the UK at the moment. So yeah, while I am excited for this, I'm not excited to the point of tears, so don't worry about me. Um, so yeah, now I know that this inlay is not going to be as holographic as my butterfly molds are but i want to just give this a go and if it's really rubbish i will just have to wait until i can get something delivered from overseas that's going to give me a better result um but i'm always up for trying things and if we can do things kind of on a budget even better this was like 10 pound for a full window thing if it works i have loads of this it isn't going in any window Shall I take an epoxy resin cast of an orange cat? Um, yeah, I have loads of this. So if it does work out better than I'm expecting, I have the potential to make loads more inlays with this. So we've, unfortunately, the tube of silicone that we had in the garage is completely gone. So I've got to open a new one. So I'll cut the end off that. And then I'm just going to bring you down and film me kind of drawing a well around the outside of this window film so let's get started i just wanted to bring you down to show you that there is some holographic stuff here i don't know if it looks rubbish just because of how shiny and thick the vinyl is that it's on um so yeah i don't know how good this is going to be in the final product but it's worth a try and it's significantly less expensive than the other methods. So if it works, all good. If it doesn't, it's not the end of the world. But you know, when you get it in the right angle and the right light, there is a decent amount of um, holographic stuff there. It's not the same as the, the really kind of high quality diffraction paper, but this was £10 for a whole roll. So, you know, we can't grumble at that. Okay, my second bottle of silicone was also completely solid. So I'm going for plan B, which is something I thought of doing in the first place to cut out step one. And that is to just cut out the sheet and stick it on the bottom of uh, a coaster mold. I didn't think it would hold. And if you get resin seeping underneath, it wouldn't be ideal. But it sticks. I tested it with a small piece of the window film and it stuck pretty well. So I think it will work. I 
drew round a coaster that I'd made with these moulds so I didn't take the backing film off because I didn't want there to potentially be a black sharpie line on um, the piece of uh, um, window film. Not that it would have mattered because it had been on the underside, but anyway, I am now fighting to get the backing film off. Um, <laughs> once I've done that, I'll stick it down and I'm going to make sure that I've wiped off any, I'm just going to polish it over so there are no fingerprints on there. I will kind of push it all down with um, a glove on or something just so I don't add any extra, but I want to make sure that it kind of attaches fairly well because I don't want it to lift up and kind of go wonky because then my silicone mould will be wonky as well. My silicone mould. The silicone um, inlay that I make will be wonky if the coaster has any kind of um, peaks and troughs in it. So I'll be with you again in about five hours when I've separated this backing film off these discs. Right, I've got those stuck down now. I kind of rubbed over it and made sure I got the, as many air bubbles out as possible. It doesn't really matter if there are some air bubbles, but I just wanted to make sure there were no huge ones and that could lead to any kind of unevenness on the surface. This time I have bought some J Diction resin to try. I have not used this one before, so it's just a, a, a two-part epoxy equal volume of each. I know that when I made these coasters last time, each coaster takes about 50 mils of resin, but I'm not intending to use these as a coaster, so they don't need to be full. So I don't wanna kind of use the full amount of resin and take it all the way up to the top when all I'm gonna be using this for is to make a silicone inlay. So I don't wanna do half, cause that might not be enough to give me a solid finish, but I'll probably go for Oh, I don't know, 35 mils each thereabouts, just so that I'm not wasting resin. Um, I want there to be enough, but not. there's no need for these to be full. So obviously, goes without saying, respirator and goggles are about to go on before I do this mixing. So um, I will put my PPE on, already got my apron on, gloves are ready to go. Mix that off camera for five minutes and this says to just leave it sitting for a few minutes before pouring to help get rid of bubbles. As long as there are no bubbles on the bottom, it really shouldn't matter. And I've got my heat gun handy anyway, so I may just pour it. I'll see how bubbly it gets. I think um, I've been a bit enthusiastic with my resin mixing to make sure it's really thorough and I'm introducing a lot of bubbles in when I mix it so I want to try to be a bit gentler with my mixing and hopefully not introduce as many bubbles but as I said bubbles are really not that important for this the important thing is that there are no greasy marks here that I've got the the, the textured side up and that that is the bit that's as flat as possible that's the important part of this project so Right, stop babbling, I'll go mix my resin and I'll be back when it's time to pour. Hey guys, it's been 24 hours. Uh, since I poured these, they're feeling pretty solid. I don't want to put any silicone on them yet, but I'm going to demold them and then just leave them to cure overnight, and then I will um, do the silicone part. But I just wanted to demold these partly because I'm impatient to see whether this holographic thing has even transferred at all, because there's no sign of the texture through the bottom of the mold. I don't know whether that's a good sign or a bad sign. Um. Um, okay. What on? It's not stuck, has it bonded? I think 
the resin has picked up the insert. If that's bonded, um, hopefully this will come off. Well, okay, this is not what I was expecting to happen. Is any step of this going to go right? One eternity later. Oh, phew. <laughs> it's coming off. That panicked me for a moment there. Okay, that's better. Oh, right. Breathe, breathe, Mary. Breathe. Okay, that's one out. <laughs> I'm going to just have to do this without gloves and I'm going to thoroughly wash my hands because there's no way that I'm going to be able to peel that off without some help from a pin and some dexterity okay the pin seemed to do the job last time can't find anywhere to get the pin under this there we go oh, got it so i have to make sure that my inserts don't go all the way to the edge phew okay my heart was stopping for a moment there so I can see holographic. Bring you in. Don't know if you're picking it up there. Yeah, you're getting it. You can see it through the ring light. So, so I'm not in love with the the overall kind of lines and texture in this, but beggars can't be choosers. This was like a really inexpensive option. I'll bring the camera down so that you can see that better um, at a better angle. I suspect it'll look better in daylight as well. It's not much better down here. I'm losing the light now. It's twilight again here. So yeah, th there is definitely holographic stuff there. If there's holographic stuff here, it may well show up through my crystal. So that's all I want. All I want is for something on the base of my geode crystals to give me holographic looking at that window film when i hold it up to the glass it is not the best this is so much better than i thought it was going to come out it looks a bit patchy but it looks like that on the original that's not anything that's happened here that's gone wrong it's been a couple of days since I demolded these um, resin, um, well, the coasters technically, but the holographic resin pieces. So they're definitely good and hard now. So I ordered this casting silicone online. It's from Start So World. Never heard of them before, but it was a fairly affordable, small bottle of silicone because I don't do a lot of stuff with silicone. So it's not worth me buying a hoofing great bottle of it. I have now kind of watched so many videos on how to make kind of silicone druzies and stuff. Some of them, they put the silicone in the middle and just kind of spread it out and let it just do its thing. Others of them create hot glue barriers and stuff. So I'm really not sure if this is going to stay on where I put it, but I'm going to try. <laughs> One thing I do know is that you don't need very much, so I'm going to mix up a minimal amount um, because this just needs to be a really thin inlay. If it's too chunky, it's just going to be a nuisance to use it. So I think just totally eyeballing this um, with no scientific reasoning whatsoever, I'm going to mix up 15 mils total. And this cup that came um, actually with the last lot of resin that I got, it's got straight sides and a flat bottom, which is important when you're mixing stuff. So I'm actually going to mix it in this cup. And as well as having really good divisions along here, like going up in increments of 5 mil, it's also got 2.5 um, mil ones up the side. So I can do 7.5 mil there and then take it up to 15 on that side. Looking at that, I reckon that is still going to be too much. 15. Yeah, I feel like 10 won't be enough. So I'm, I'm going to stick with my original plan. 
So I'm going to get my head down so I can actually read the volume accurately because if you're looking at it from above, you're not getting an accurate reading. So I mixed the silicone really thoroughly for five minutes, timed it so that I kept making sure it was really thoroughly mixed. Then I just poured a little bit on the top and spread it to the edge. It was gloopy enough that it wasn't going to go over the edge. The only thing is that where there were some air bubbles around the top of these coasters was a little bit of silicone that was seeping out of the well that that air bubble formed. For the most part, it stayed beautifully without any problem at all. nothing more to, to do here I just need to leave them now for six hours and then when I say six hours I am genuinely not going to come back I'm not a temptation to come back at bedtime and see if the cure jet is going to be strong I am not going to do that I am going to leave them till tomorrow morning and then carefully peel them away once they're peeled away, uh, you're not supposed to use them to cast anything for another 24 hours just so that all of the stuff that's within them can finish out gassing and all the moisture is gone. Otherwise it can affect your resin cure time. So I am not going to... Some of that is leaking where the bubbles are. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to try to use these until um, probably tomorrow night. So I just wanted to try to get a side view here to show you how thin that layer actually is. It's really very, very thin, like a couple of mils probably, maybe a bit more in the middle because I'm sure that because these coast molds were not full. And it shouldn't have been dished. They should be pretty good on the bottom. But yeah, this is a really thin layer, which is exactly what I wanted. I don't want these to be chunks. We need them to be super slim so that they just sit and don't affect the base of the product that you put them in. So yeah, it's pretty cool. That, I mean, it hasn't cured yet and there's a chance that it will carry on self-leveling and pour all over the sides and make a mess, but that was pretty easy to do. No bubbles, really easy to work with, easy to mix. This is amazing. Um, don't jinx it, Mary. Keep quiet. <laughs> I'm looking forward to doing more um, silicone stuff now. That, that was fun. Guess what? I couldn't wait. <laughs> it's now been almost nine hours and this queue is in six. My justification for demolding this now instead of tomorrow morning is that this needs to continue to cure out in the open before I can use it in resin. And I think it's going to do that better if it's not still attached to the resin under here. So I've talked myself into peeling it off now. Nothing to do with the fact that I'm impatient and can't wait to see if it works. <laughs> yes, I am that person that touches the wet paint sign to see if it is in fact still wet. So these are going to be really, really delicate. So I'm going to be really careful and just try to just catch the edge and carefully peel it away. Oh, here it comes. Oh boy, that's static. Okay. Oh my God, it's actually holographic. It worked. It worked. Oh my goodness, I made an inlay. I made an inlay and it's holographic. Don't know why I'm surprised, but I didn't think it was gonna work. I did not think it was gonna work. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> You guys have probably been making inlays for years. This is all new to me. I've only been doing resin for a really short time. I've never cast anything in silicone. I've never worked with anything holographic before. So kind of doing this for myself and making these little inlays is super cool. It used very little silicone. And because this is kind of really small and malleable, I'll be able to lay that down on top of 
a whole load of different things. That's amazing. That's actually amazing. I can't, I can't believe that. Okay, I'm going to bring you down so you can see that this is in fact holographic. So from back there, you was probably thinking, what is she talking about? There's no holographic here. But the silicone looks more holographic than the film did. To be fair, the ring light is picking that up. You do need the right angle of light for these holographic things to show up. Like even the like the super fancy holographic moulds. But that's awesome. I'm so happy. Look, it's holographic. It's actually holographic. It looks more holographic than the resin does, which is kind of weird. I may have to cut them up. It depends. I'll see how I go. But yeah, I'm so happy. So I'm going to leave these on a flat surface. They're cured enough that I'm not concerned about them sticking to my mat. Um, but this top surface now can continue to cure overnight. My silicone inlay has been curing for a good amount of time. So now comes the heartbreaking task of chopping it up. Um, <laughs> I made it with the intention of cutting it up, but now it comes to doing it. I'm like, no, but it's my baby. I made it. I created it. Um, but it needs to <laughs> fit in here. It needs to sit on the inside because if I just lay it like this, it's going to be dished and it's not going to make contact with the base. The base will end up warped. So it ha there's no other way. It has to be cut out. So this is not uniform. Um, so I need to cut it out drawing it with the um, the holographic side up so that when I put it in it will be the right shape so I will clean it again after I've done this but the, the base of this mold is a little bit squidgy now the beauty is this doesn't have to go all the way to the edge uh, as long as it it sits inside the mold I'll be okay so I'm using a Posca paint pen to draw on the silicone and as I said, it doesn't have to be absolutely spot on as long as it sits inside here. So I'm going to put my PPE on, mix up my resin and what I want to do is leave it to sit in the beaker for a while. There's a really long work time with Vista Ocean because it takes two days to cure. The amount of bubbles that were in this and I don't have any micro brushes yet. Um, so yeah, if I, any other bubbles appear, I'm going to have an inlay in there as well. So there's nothing I can do about it. So I am going to let the resin sit and hit it with my heat gun in the beaker before pouring it and hope that will eliminate some of the bubbles because I do not have a pressure pot. So right, I'm going to mix up my resin off camera, then I'll be back when it's time to pour it in. So having left that resin to sit for a few minutes to try to get the bubbles out, I then made a massive mistake in that I pretty much filled the mould straight away, forgetting to allow for the fact that I needed to squidge all of those points to get the bubbles out. So that left me with a massive problem because I really didn't want to pour the resin back out again. So I had to get a, a skewer to kind of get in there because there wasn't enough wiggle room to even squidge the mold like I did last time so I kind of filed the end off so this wasn't a sharp point and I just kind of got in there and just dislodged as many air bubbles as I possibly could then I had to try and get that silicone inlay in and boy was that difficult um, you see me do it once here it took me about seven goes to get it in without the resin just totally scooping it up and swallowing it but I got there in the end so just use my skewer again to get the air bubbles out as best I could and then just left it well alone <laughs> Oh, 
Okay, it's been nearly three days since I poured these. It's been incredibly hot here in the UK, so this stuff is solid. I'm trying to demold it in this little patch of sun, um, which hopefully will pick up the holographic texture. Now, this was a beast to demold last time, but Wendy at Team Pish said apparently if you spritz a bit of alcohol in there, it can help to release it a bit. Gosh, that's kind of dancing crystals already. Let me see if I can get a bit of alcohol spray in there. Let's see if it helps. I remember feeling like I was going to break this mold when I demolded last time because it really grips where it tapers in there. Oh, this mold is covered in mica powder, even though I didn't actually put any mica powder in there. It's a beast. Okay, I do have some bubbles, but it's better than last time. Some in prominent places, which is really irritating. Okay, so it's kind of got some crystals going on in the sun. The important thing is this inlay. So we'll see if we can get this little guy out. Just need to try to get your finger underneath and just try to peel it off. base is holographic. Thing is, can I see the holographic stuff through this? It's kind of hard to tell because this, sorry it's hot, I've got the window open so there's traffic noise. This is kind of pretty and casts rainbow crystals anyway by itself but I think you can see that the holographic pattern here in the base is actually coming through on the desk. Well, the base is definitely holographic, so I would say that was a success. How much of an effect that is having on the rest of the crystal is kind of hard to say. Let me get the other one. Let's see what we're getting with both. Okay, they're kind of similar, except when you look down on this one, obviously you've got the colour shifting mica that changes colour when it picks up on those tips. On this one, yeah, you can actually, when you look down from the top, you can see some of that holographic texture making it through into the tips. So I need to try and film this in some different lights, but you can definitely see that the base is holographic. So obviously it's got this pattern, which I don't love, but given that this was done on a budget and I made the inlay myself and you know it's pretty clear. There are a few bubbles, which is annoying. Um, but I got the bubbles out of most of these tips, apart from that one, we'll ignore that tiny one. <laughs> but in terms of bubbles, um, this one's way better. In terms of the rainbows that this crystal is casting, I don't believe the silicone inlay has really added anything on top of what would be there without it. What it has added is the way that it looks visually when you look down from the top. And that is incredibly hard to pick up on camera. So I am glad that this worked and there is definitely holographic stuff here. You can clearly see that in this little video clip, but I'm just not sure that this has added as much extra on top of this crystal than it already had before. 
that doesn't mean I'm disheartened. I'm really happy that this process worked. I made my own silicone inlay for the first time and it definitely worked. The base of the crystal is fine. It's, it's gorgeous. I mean, it's absolutely gorgeous, even despite some of the bubbles. So I'm incredibly happy with how it came out. But for my next project, I really need to use that inlay in something else that isn't giving me lots of beautiful rainbows already. So yeah um i don't think it's added that much to this particular crystal if i'm honest i think it will to the other crystal um the other mold that's not very good so anyway i really enjoyed the process it was something new for me it it was a long process many many steps but i loved doing it so i hope you enjoyed coming along with the journey with me thanks for watching guys i'll see you in the next one bye for now